Are you happy? When was the last time you woke up and felt happy and joyful and excited to be in your life? Well, if you've answered no, then you may be experiencing a dopamine deficit. All right, a fancy way of saying you're not happy, I know, but there's chemistry to it and I want you to understand the science and how it's connected to how you feel. Dopamine is the feel-good neurotransmitters. We get pleasure from dopamine, and there's so many different ways we experience that pleasure. It might be after sitting and eating a beautiful meal, drinking a glass of wine, if that's something that you like to do, engaging in your favorite activity. For me, it's yoga or Pilates. I feel great after it, right? My dopamine is surging, and I am ready to tackle the day. For others, though, even those activities no longer bring joy. Spending time with loved ones no longer brings joy. And before you blow up and blame your life, it's important to understand that you might be having an issue with this very critical, important neurotransmitter called dopamine. And many people today are walking around in a dopamine deficit. And that in turn is leading to depression, feelings of unhappiness, and honestly, a lot of disconnection from society. Why, why are we here? How did we get into the state of not having enough dopamine? Well, there's so many different reasons why. And a part of it is just our modern age. We spend a lot of time scrolling, which gives us a quick dopamine hit right on our phone, but doesn't give us lasting dopamine to make us feel good for a long period of time. But because we get addicted to that quick hit, we spend, it's almost like we sort of re-emphasize the behavior where we spend more and more time on our phone, isolating and disengaging more, resulting in more of a dopamine deficit. Another reason why we have a dopamine deficit is simply because we don't have or we're not getting the foods that we need to produce and to make dopamine. We need protein, we need healthy fats, we need B vitamins and magnesium. We need the building blocks of dopamine to actually make dopamine. So if you're running around eating a highly processed diet, you know, uh, not eating in community with others, then you may have a dopamine deficit because the food quality is bad, but the connections are bad too. And you're not getting the feedback and the input that you need to help you to balance your dopamine levels. If you're not sleeping through the night, not going to the bathroom consistently, or your hormones are off, a lot of time that too results in a dopamine deficit. And believe it or not, there are actually genetics that will wire certain people towards a dopamine deficit, meaning they start out in the world kind of behind when it comes to being able to produce and manage their dopamine levels. Sometimes in children, this looks like kids that cry a lot or have that high pitched scream or just simply seem unhappy. It can move on to depression and anxiety and so much more. But in our teenagers, a dopamine deficit not only looks like a mental health issue, but it can also result in an eating disorder or binging or trouble with focus and concentration like ADD and ADHD. As we progress through the spectrum of our lives, a dopamine deficit can look like addiction, right? Because you get that hit, you feel good. So it could be everything from being addicted to food to being addicted to substances or alcohol and so much more. I think when we're thinking about how people feel, whether we're talking about how our children feel or how our partner feels or how our family feels, identifying and understanding that there may be a dopamine deficit is really important because you want to build a plan to reverse it and turn it around. And that plan, while it does need to be individualized, and that's what we do in practice, starts with many of the basics, right? Are we sleeping consistently at night? Are we getting good, clean food that nourishes us and allows our body to build dopamine? Are we getting the nutrients we need? Or are you or someone you love in that genetic family where no matter how great you eat and no matter how many healthy behaviors you engage in, because of your genetics, you're chronically low in certain key nutrients. And many times we see that in the population that has MTHFR or COMT or SOD, many of these mutations that we talk about over and over again. So for example, you may be chronically low in methylfolate, which triggers low dopamine and depression. 
are low in glutathione, which can also trigger a low dopamine state. Understanding the chemistry is important and connecting that to how we feel equally important. If we can recognize a dopamine deficit in ourselves or someone that we love, then we can guide them on a healing journey so that they don't engage in behaviors that give them a quick hit of dopamine, right? If you find someone scrolling all the time, they're trying to medicate themselves. Let's help them translate that to a different behavior. Maybe it's a walk outside, right? Maybe it's volunteering somewhere and, and being of service to somebody else, which is also stimulating our dopamine. Maybe it's exercising or meditating, right? Or any of these behaviors that can help us raise our dopamine levels. At the end of the day, building a plan around our neurotransmitters and supporting those neurotransmitters is so important. While I've spent a lot of time talking about hormones and hormone balance, dopamine, serotonin, and cortisol balance is equally important. So ask yourselves, I challenge you, and, and let me know, I wanna see what your comments are. Let me know, do you think you have a dopamine deficit? And what are the signs that you can sort of latch onto or behaviors that help you recognize that this might be you? Or you might actually be more concerned about your family. Do you think your children have it? And I think we on this channel are a community. And I think by sharing your experiences, we can help one another identify when children or a partner or a family is in crisis and then start to craft and build a healing journey so that the entire unit ultimately gets healthy and healthier and can thrive and exist together. All right, dopamine deficit is real. It's paired right there with the cortisol crisis and hormone imbalances. I talk about all of that in many of these videos right here on this channel. Check them out and don't forget, I post new videos every week. Don't forget to like and subscribe.